I'm Elliot Woninika and welcome to our lecture on enterprise risk management. I hope it's going to be an interesting session in this video recording should last approximately 18 to 20 minutes. So what are our objectives? So from the word risk, before I look at the specific learning outcomes, you would find that every business encounter the risk in one form or the other. It's one thing that you are guaranteed of the moment you get into business. So the question is, do you have processes and procedures in place as a business to manage those risks that you are going to face from your operating activities as well as other strategic initiatives that you are going to be taking as a business. So the learning outcome from this lecture is, we want you to have a general understanding of enterprise risk management. And you are going to realize that most of you, as future business leaders, you are going to be responsible for the day-to-day -day management of, of risk. And then, we are also going to be discussing risk management components and apply the risk management process. Being able to identify risk events and then also analyze those identified risks on the basis of likelihood and impact, as well as divide the responses to those identified risks. Because normally there's no point in identifying a risk and then doing nothing about that particular risk. And we are also going to briefly discuss the role of activity to re reduce risk as well as explain risk monitoring initiatives. And also being able to understand the link between risk management, strategy and corporate governance within the context of financial management. So the big question is, what is risk? It might seem like a simple question, now, I know it's a word that is commonly used in our day-to-day -day language. To put it simply, risk is, you have been exposed to danger. So if someone is going to tell you that, okay, take this lift at your own risk, or leave your goods at your own risk, they are telling you that, my friend, if you are going to leave your stuff there, anything can happen to them. They might be stolen, they might be rained on ETC. So that is the risk that you are willing to take. Oh, that is the danger to which you are now exposing your, your goods to, and which is what we also refer to within the context of financial management when we are discussing risk. So within the context of a corporate, the next question is, what is risk management? Because as a business, we are saying the moment we know that there is risk, we can't just ignore. We need to be able to manage that risk. So what do you mean by this? So key thing, Risk management is an ongoing process. So the emphasis here is, as part of the day-to-day -day activities within operating activities of a business, risk management is a core process, which is designed to identify potential, potential risk events. So what are we saying here? You can't talk, start talking about a risk, if, risk management when something has already been stolen. That's not risk management. Risk management is proactive in nature, rather it being reactive in nature. So you are looking at those potential, what might happen, what can go, what can go wrong. And should, should, should enable entities to manage the risks within the entity's risk appetite. So I'm going to discuss further on the concept of risk appetite. What do you mean by it? And how does it impact an entity's risk management philosophy and, and style? So, how does the risk management link to all the other talks, the topics within our financial management syllabus? Well, the most important thing is never to view this topic in isolation. And more often than not, it's not examined in isolation, but it will be interlinked within the other topics within your financial management syllabus and even within your auditing syllabus. So, for example, we have done corporate strategy. And you are going to find as part of strategy formulation, we need to consider the risk profile for whatever strategic direction we are taking. So it means as we are building a strategy, we also need to have a risk management strategy. Very, very important. And it's also linked to governance. You find governance as a concept, the way entities are managed and controlled. So it also means that it's clear that at governance level, we define the risk appetite level of an entity. 
And I know with the new auditing syllabus, we have done King 4 in the National Court. And one of the requirements placed on the board is to be able to proactively manage risk. Then, financing decision. Should we or should we not? So financing, we are looking at capital. So if you go back to the lectures on cost of capital, capital structure, we introduce the principle around financial risk. So what is the risk? Risk associated with raising capital or using a certain form of capital. So if you are going to finance our business with debt, what risks does that expose us to? If you are going to finance our business entirely by equity, what risks does it expose that business to? Then investing decisions. For example, high risk, high return. So I say we have done all your investment appraisals, but then at times you need to look at other qualitative factors. If we take this investment decision, what else can go wrong? We are now analyzing the risk profile of that particular investment project. Then lastly, dividend decision. So from a shareholder perspective, when they are evaluating whether the dividend policy is being proposed by management we work for them, they all tend to ask themselves, okay, as a shareholder, my return on my invested capital is going to come through in the form of either a dividend or a share cap or appreciation in the share price. So if they are doing the analysis, they also need to evaluate it from a risk perspective. If I say, okay, I can wait for later capital appreciation, they say that that capital appreciation may never come. Which is why we would advocate of bending the head here to say, I would rather get my money now as compared to waiting for unguaranteed future income. So again, what principles have been incorporated? Risk management. So moving further with this concept, let's briefly discuss what we mean by risk appetite. I know all of you, because we are human beings, we know food appetite. So this appetite say, I want something to eat. So from a risk perspective, what do we mean when we refer to risk appetite? So the key concept under risk appetite is you can have a business which is risk averse. So a risk averse business is simply saying we want to avoid risk as much as possible. But in practice, being a risk averse person or business person, you might as well get out of business. Because every business decision you make will carry some form of risk. So it's very, or it's next to impossible to avoid risk, especially when you are in business. Then the next level of risk is someone who is neut risk neutral. So they are saying it's neither you know, they are not worried about any particular risk that may come through from a decision that I would have taken, risk neutral. Then risk seeking behavior. So these ordinary are the people who are a bit aggressive. They are not afraid of risk, but they are telling themselves high risk, high return. So they are more open to taking more, more risk. So in determining whether or not an end is going to be risk averse, risk neutral or risk seeking, it's also going to depend on the risk appetite of that particular business. And risk appetite will depend on the risk capacity of an end. How much risk can a company be able to be exposed to? So if you look at an example, I've got a company which is generating $100 million in revenue, versus a company which is generating $5 million in revenue. So you're going to find that the risk appetite of those two businesses can be totally different. Or if I look at a company with a high operating leverage, versus a company with a low operating leverage, their risk capacities are going to be different. But if you've got high operating leverage, it means that business is sitting on high fixed cost level. So their risk appetite might be quite low because of their capacity. And then also risk counter of an entity. You find that there are certain organizations that are generally aggressive in the way they do business. They are more risk seeking. So it's the culture within a, a company. And then you get other companies which are now a bit more risk averse. So you find the most established businesses, they are more focused on minimizing risk as much as possible. So risk couch. And those in growth stage, they are more prone to take on more, more risk, which speaks to the culture of that particular 
end it. Then risk management process. How does this work? So we say the risk management must be an integral part of how a business is run and managed. So the first step in risk management is we need to have processes and procedures that allow the business to identify risks. In step one, even from an examination perspective, is one of the most important steps. Why? But in examination, you are saying from the information provided, are you able to identify any risks arising from that information? So how do you identify risks? So we've got tools that can be used to enable businesses to identify risks, which include performing a SWOT analysis. So within a SWOT analysis, if you look at weaknesses, if you look at threats, those are all risks. So we are looking at an end it, and the question says identify the key business risks from the information provided. You can look up for the weaknesses. You can look for the for any threats arising from the information provided. Remember the question is the question has not said use a SWOT analysis, it has said identify business risks. So I use SWOT analysis as a tool. Or you can do process analysis. You've been given a system description. From that process, can you identify what can go wrong? Or oh, Pestel. So if you look at Pestel, it's more focused on the external environment. So you can use the Pestel analysis to analyze any threats arising from the political environment, economic environment, social, technological, environmental, legal, based on the information provided. So the Pestel is giving you a structure that can you use to identify your risks. If or management can also make use of value chain analysis. How, what key stages do we go through in our business processes, which can also allow them to identify key business risks. Scenario analysis, that's another tool. Then what would be the sources of information? So practically, management can use risk surveys, interviews with line managers, to obtain information around the potential risk areas. Or they can make use of macroeconomic events, government announcements. But for exam purposes, I would say use the information in your case study. With that information, use this tool that we've just discussed, SWOT, PESTEL, value chain analysis, scenario analysis, to be able to identify risks. Now, after identifying these risks, step two would be we now need to assess risk. Why? Because we should not worry about each and every potential risk. There needs to be some form of cutoff and sifting through. And from an examination, that's where you normally use identify key. So the way the key is saying, okay, we have identified your risks, but from that list, which ones are key? And how do you go about it? Number one, determine the likelihood of the risk event occurring. Okay, I've looked at this possibility, but what is the chances of it actually occurring? If the chance of it occurring is remote, maybe it's not a risk that you should worry about. And also determine the impact of the risk event were it to occur. How, what is the impact on the business? So you can quantify the impact. If the impact is minimal, maybe it's not a risk that you should worry about. And this criteria is the one that you can use in the examination to identify key business risks and not to just write everything and anything that you think is a, is a risk. Then also businesses should then also be able to rank their risks high, medium, low. Definitely high risk ones, we need to have more policies and to monitor and manage those particular, particular risks. And also as part of the risk assessment process, Analyze the risk by their key drivers. What are the risk drivers and what are the risk indicators? When we know that we are now exposed to this particular risk, that's the risk indicator. What part of our processes trigger these risks? These are now your risk drivers. So risk assessment. Then thirdly, you need to come up with responses to mitigate the adverse effects of those risks. So you can have a response that eliminates or avoids the risk. So normal elimination in business, 
is quite difficult. Why? Because risk is inherent to the to business. So eliminating and rarely do we have procedures to eliminate, but we focus more on reducing the risk. So as an example, the fact that you have taken insurance over the company's assets. We have not necessarily eliminated the risk maybe of theft to the assets. But we are saying, should the asset be stolen, we are going to reduce the impact of the, of the risk. So here we are managing the impact rather than managing the likelihood. Or if we say as a risk management mechanism, all our monies are kept in a secured safe deposit box. So we are saying we have reduced the likelihood of the assets being stolen. So risk, risk, your risk responses should manage both likelihood and impact if the risk event is going to occur. And then you can accept the risk. You are saying, okay, this risk, if we do a cost-benefit analysis, we would rather live with the risk rather than coming up with mitigated measures as, as it might be expensive to implement those measures. Some risk you ignore. Depending, both are saying the magnitude very low, the likelihood of the risk occurring very low, so I'm going to ignore those particular risks. So from a business risk categories, you need to know the various types of business risks that an entity can be exposed to. Strategic risks. So these normally arise from the strategic direction that a company has taken. As an example, you can have risks arising from technological disruption. So, classical example, I'm sure global we know of the Uber, taxi hailing services. So those guys, when they came in, definitely they, they disrupted the traditional metered taxis. So strategically, it affected a whole industry. So that's a strategic risk. And then you look at another type of risk, operational risks. So this arises from the risk of business interruption or inefficient allocation of resources. So on this one, just look at the business operations and ask yourself what can go wrong. So if I'm looking at CAA, an operational risk could be what can go wrong, a lecturer can fail to pitch up for class. That's an operational risk. What can go wrong, my lecture equipment might, malf might malfunction, operational risk. Then financial risk. So this arises from how we finance our business. So remember capital structure, weighted cost of capital. Depending on the form of capital we are going to use, it then exposes a business to capital structure. So to financial risk. So if a business finances its business, its company with debt, it exposes the business to interest rate risk as an example. There are other types of business risk. Information risks, lack of available information for to meet the needs of the business. Compliance risk, we are saying every business is affected by some form of law and regulation. So there's a risk that we might file to comply with those particular laws and regulations. Hazard risks, they can be weather hazards, they can be pu public or civil unrest, strikes resulting in destruction of our property. That's a hazard risk. Where are we located? Are we located in an area which is prone to civil unrest? So it then exposes us to hazard risks. Reporting risks. We can fail to comply with financial reporting standards, posing a reporting risk. Now, you find that we could different firm that have been developed as part of that ends can use for risk management. An example is the COSO risk management framework. So this is the Commission of Organization Sponsoring Organization Commission of Sponsoring Organization who developed a framework that can be used by entities for risk management. So we are going to provide you with a handout which provides you more information around the cost of framework which can be used by businesses for risk management processes. And if you look at the framework, it more or less follows the risk response or the, the risk management system that we discussed previously. But it's always good to further read on it. This pair up on the hand that I'm going to give you to get a better understanding of how risk can be managed as per the COSO, COSO framework. So some of key terms that are normally used in risk management. 
risk impact, inherent risk, likelihood. What do you mean by residual risk? Risk management plan, risk appetite, risk management philosophy, risk management policies, risk tolerance. So what is the idea? They go and read around those terms if you are not clear about what they mean so that you enhance your understanding of risk management. Then from an examination technique, you will find that this topic can be examined indirectly. An example would be, discuss the key matters moving me or this committee should consider in evaluating whether they should invest in SMP based on non is proposed transaction structure. So we, here we want to make an investment decision. So it's very easy to focus on the numbers. But you then need to ask yourself as factors to consider. You should not also you should also consider any potential risk arising from the way the transaction is being structured. So these are now more qualitative factors. But if you're not careful, you can actually walk out of an exam and say risk was not examined. So perform a sort analysis of this investment project. Are there any potential threats that might arise from us taking this, this road? So for any follow-up questions on this lecture, please feel free to contact members of the monthly department as listed in the email, in the emails on the slide. And thank you very much for taking time to listen to this tutorial on risk management. Remember, risk is integral to everything that we do as part of financial management processes. Thank you.